Today's scripture is going to make a difference for you if you're confused about the concept of eternal life. In this video, we're going to see the core message that God wants all of us to understand. How great it is, how essential it is, how simple it is, and how it affects us. Welcome to Scripture That Makes a Difference. If you're like most of us and appreciate some help seeing how the Bible makes life better today, you're in the right place. I'm Pastor Mike, and this is my study. I've been a preacher and Bible teacher for over 20 years. I've taught in four different states and in cities ranging from about 100 people up to about 250,000 people. And I've come to believe that all of Scripture makes a difference no matter where you live or who you are. And I love helping people see how. And that's why this channel is called Scripture That Makes a Difference. Because all the videos on this channel aim to show how each passage makes a difference today. Now, if this is your first time here, you can learn more about the channel in the description below. And if you find you like hearing how specific passages make a difference today, just click the subscribe button and you'll get more. And if you want to, you can read the passage I'm about to talk about by using the link in the description below to 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 through 15. All of us that put our faith in Jesus Christ have a story about what it's been like to live with him. Some are happy stories. We started out at a very young age, and we followed his principles throughout our entire life and walked very closely with him. And that's tended to lead us into happier places. But some of us have ups and downs in our story. Maybe it was a later conversion, or maybe we strayed away from God and got into things that disappointed him and disappointed us and hurt other people. Still others have stories that are mostly downs. Maybe they have a recent conversion or have not, re not really followed what God had planned for them and resisted his input throughout their entire life and, and now regret some of that. You know, wish the story was different. We all have a story and some people really enjoy telling it. They have a temperament that leads them to be comfortable as the center of attention and they enjoy telling stories for other people to listen to, but a lot of us really don't. Some of us are shy or sad about the story we have to tell. And to be honest, many of us are just afraid of the reaction we'll get. And so we don't share our stories very often. Would it surprise you to find out that God has a story too? John records God's story for us in his first epistle. That's 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 through 15. And I hope you've taken the time to read that. John starts out by telling us how great God's story is and compares it to the testimony of men, the stories that men would tell about God. But God's story is even greater. It's the story of how Jesus came to earth and did the work that he did that was for our benefit. He goes on in verse 10 to tell us how that story is actually internal, and there's an internal confirmation that that story has validity. Many of us who are followers of Jesus Christ can tell the story of how during prayer or during a convention or during a Bible study or sometimes during worship services, we've felt that internal presence that confirms that God has entered into our life. The content of God's story is found in verses 11 through 13. It says that God gave us eternal life based on what Jesus has done, that God has given us a testimony that God has given us eternal life, and that this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. John says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Now, three things stand out in those three verses. First is that God has given us eternal life. It's a free gift. We don't have to earn that. And that life is for those who have the Son of God, those who have received the truth about Jesus. And according to verse 13, believe it. I like the word trust here. Uh, the Greek word can be translated either way. Who trust in the name of the Son of God. Those are the ones that have the Son of God and subsequently have eternal life. That's the content of God's story. And then in the last two verses, John records the results of God's story. Verse 14 says, and this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we've asked of him. 
And I'm aware of the fact that these verses have been misunderstood. Some people have taken these verses to say, I can have whatever I ask for as long as I ask in Jesus' name, and God's obligated to give it to me. But we missed the significance of the phrase, according to his will. What John is saying there is if we live according to his will, every aspect of our life seeks to live according to the truth that we don't deserve it, we can't earn it, Jesus has done it for us, and Jesus is walking with us. We know if we really live those that he's going to hear, and that those truths are going to guide our requests. Therefore, when we ask, we know he's going to listen, and we can simply relax and know that he's going to answer our requests in the best possible way. Now, I can't imagine a clearer possible way for John to have recorded God's story but did you know you have a story too? You have a story of your interaction with God, and, and I'd like to ask you several questions right now that will help you clarify your story. For instance, who is Jesus to you? Think about that for a minute. Who is Jesus? What does he mean to me? You can ask yourself, what is your relationship with God? Is it a close, intimate, minute-by-minute -minute relationship, or is it something that only happens every Christmas and Easter in a building somewhere across town. And why do you feel that way? Honest answers here will clarify your story about Jesus. And you could also ask yourself, what change has Jesus' presence meant in my life? Has there been a change? Should there be a change? And as you test yourself, I'm speaking primarily to people who claim to have that relationship with Jesus. I'm not asking to check your conversion. I'm asking you to check your relationship to check what's happened in your life since that conversion. I'm basically asking you to clarify your story. And as you clarify your story, remember this one truth. Nobody has ever gotten 100% on that test. Only Jesus has. Jesus, who left his Father's side in heaven to come to earth to live like us, who lived a perfect life without ever sinning, without ever violating anything that God had in mind for his perfect Son but who still went to the cross and paid the price for sin, even though he had no sin of his own to pay the price for. Therefore, Jesus can give that credit, that ace, to whoever he chooses. He can literally put that in your record book so that there is an ace credited to you. Yes, Jesus has aced the test for us. All we have to do is trust him. And when we put our faith in him in that way, to trust him to handle it, to ace the test for us, our story, your personal story, becomes our story. Your story of walking with Jesus. Your story becomes part of God's story. And God's story becomes infused into your story so that the two merge together and you become one whole story. And you become one whole story with the church and with the congregation that you belong to. And you begin to have a bigger and bigger and bigger story as you walk through the years with your Savior. And any passage that connects us to God's story is scripture that makes a difference. So have you ever been confused about eternal life and how it begins and how it affects our life today? If that's true, just type, that's me, in the comments below. And you can put other comments in the space below, too, or questions that you have about what I've said. I'd love to hear your thoughts, and I'll respond to your questions just as soon as I can. And don't forget, you can put suggestions for future topics in the comments down below as well. And if you've gained anything of value from this video, just please click that thumbs up button. And if you like hearing how specific passages can make a difference today, just click the subscribe button and click the bell so that you're the first to know when I've released new episodes. Please remember, you can also help us get this difference-making message to your friends by sharing it on your favorite social media. And if you're ever anywhere near Enid, Oklahoma, come by and visit us on a Sunday morning. Our service starts at 10 o'clock. I'd love to meet you. I hope you can come by and visit us soon. If you need the address, it's in the description below. And until next time, don't forget this. By being connected to God's story, our eternal life starts right now.